Thank you so much, Peng Collective, to uh, invite me here. Um, it was a very short notice, though, but, uh, but I think it's very important to speak about the issue um, here in Germany. Uh, it, it really matters to us Pakistanis. Um, and I feel that the issue is dying down uh, in Pakistan, though there are a few activists who are working on um, drones, but not getting much attention from media, not getting much attention from government. And there is no response from the, uh, from the other governments who are violating our sovereignty. Um, so I think I, I'll, I'll be going back to my uh, written speech. Um, intelligence is a very deceptive term. It is a word that sounds positive. It is a word that suggests that you might be in good hands. But the more classified information is revealed, the more we realize how often intelligence is dangerously wrong. The intelligence machine led by the US and supported by many other nations, such as Germany, through data sharing programs and physical in infrastructure, such as the airbase Ramstein, is constantly making mistakes, launching drones and accidentally killing innocent people in my country, Pakistan, as well as in Afghanistan, Yemen, and Somalia. In Waziristan, an area where CIA-operated drones are in constant use in an, in an effort to kill militants, the Foundation for Fundamental Rights found that the militants are, in fact, only collateral damage. Civilians are the ones who more often than not end up being the main targets of these attacks. For those who manage to dodge these attacks, every day is another gamble. Will I get struck? Will someone I know get struck? If one of us gets struck, what is the likelihood I'll actually survive? It is Russian roulette and 800,000 Pakistani who are playing, and none of them chose to. This is a story that unfolds across the country. Drones are ripping apart communities and destroying lives in ways that is hard for someone who hasn't ex experienced it to imagine. People are afraid to gather in groups more than two or three, as they know this attracts the attention of drones. And gathering in a group means you have a higher likelihood of coming into contact with someone who might be a potential target. This means that sacred moments like family gatherings, meetings of village elders, prayers, and even funerals don't happen. People are constantly afraid. Many people have psychological disorders. Ignoring the existence of drones might be possible for Germany and for the US, but for many Pakistanis, this is a constant buzz in the air, like deadly mosquitoes in some kind of horror stories. Bug splat is what drone operators apparently say after killing their targets. These drones are all part of what is termed a targeted killing program, which sounds much more efficient than it is. In reality, there is often nothing targeted about these attacks. Data about people is collected by surveillance, and pattern of life analysis is made where certain characteristics, like maybe a beard or certain signature, suggest you might be involved in a terrorist activity. The US has never clarified what these characteristics are actually. One unnamed official told the New York Times that when the CIA sees three men doing jumping jacks, they think it is a terrorist training camp. Targets are tracked based on the location of their SIM card, so if they lend their phone to someone else or they happen with some other people driving in a car, people get killed. This was a basic, uh, very big topic of the media in 2013, but in fact, these kinds of strikes still continues. Earlier this year, two Western civilians were killed in such a strike. The Pakistani government is by no means a victim in this situation. They have been very confusing in their reaction to the drone program led by US. Sometimes they are outspoken and sometimes making quiet deals. They have their own drones too now. So the army are very proud to have just launched their own home drone, which we call Burak. The intelligence of Pakistan is by no means better. They learn from each other. But this you can ask me about later. Let's look at Germany's role. The former drones operator, Brandon Bryant, who actually is coming to Berlin tomorrow, said very clearly, without Germany, the drone war in Pakistan would not be possible. 
The German public knows this since the 30th May 2013 at the very least when investigative journalists broke the story about Remsten, a secretive complex in Germany. As I heard from my friends here, the US military was openly advertising in a job announcement for a career in Remsten where you can nominate who is going to be the victim of the targeted killing. I can explain it to you very clearly if you like. Drone pilots are sitting in Nawara the so-called relay is in Remston and people are killed in Pakistan. Economically speaking, this is a great deal for the US military as drone operators only need a year's training instead of the full pilot training. And hundreds of private sector contractors are hired to analyze terror, terror data in a multi-million dollar growing industry. So some people are certainly winning. But what does Germany get out of this deal is the question. You might not be flying any drones here, and you might be very outspoken against surveillance, but you need to ask yourself, are you any better than the, than the US if you are allow, allowing such operations to use your locations? Or if you gave a friend the keys to your house and then a murder takes place, wouldn't you feel responsible? Thank you.